Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to give you guys a spoiler-free review of What If Episode 3. Near the end of this video, I will be talking about certain spoilers in the story, but I'll warn you guys a long time before I get into it. So before we get into it, if you guys are new on here, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn notification on so you don't miss any time I up a new video or I go live. But without wasting more time, let's get into it. Give you guys a spoiler-free review of What If Episode 3. Now, my favorite part of this episode was just the whole concept of it being a murder mystery. The Avengers have been murdered or they're getting murdered throughout the episode and it's basically Nick Fury and S.H.I.E.L.D.'s job to find out who did it and I love this story of a who did it story I love mysteries and one thing this reminded me of was Knives Out literally they thought Clint was the murderer and then he died they thought he killed Thor and the way that they showed how everything went down at the end of the episode was so great I thought this episode was overall executed perfectly and I think one thing that attests to that is definitely the great writing I thought the writing this episode was absolutely phenomenal and though at times the comedy feel felt like kind of forced like kind of like they were just doing it for nostalgia purposes like they did certain things with certain characters to make it just make us just feel like they were like older like in the, how they were in their older movies which it makes sense because like that that's that form it's like the older form of the characters it's like iron man when he's first getting recruited he's still cocky and everything and obviously he's still cocky but like overall they still have the same characteristics of older characters and sometimes it did feel like forced comedy but overall Overall, I will say the writing was pretty good. It was a very highly entertaining story. I love the balance of like action and dialogue and just exposition. Like it was really well written because I had like fun action moments, but I also felt like super sympathetic. For example, there's this one part with the Hulk in it and where the Hulk, well, where Bruce Banner turns into the Hulk. That's probably one of my favorite parts of the episode just because of how kind of, not heartfelt it was, but kind of how like randomly like sad it was, I guess. And it was just super good. I love loved it so much i loved also the like i said before the mystery story it was so well written that it felt like a novel i'm gonna be honest it literally felt like the the novel titled who killed the avengers i love that and it's just it was so great and i think that they're extending the story i think it's gonna be in another episode probably just because the ending left on something that could be picked up by another episode so maybe they're not doing it in this season maybe they'll do it next season so maybe that'll be the case but we don't even know and we don't even know yet we we don't even know next week's episode i think it's rumored because last week a lot of you were saying the episode was going to be the tony stark and killmonger one but obviously it wasn't it was the who, who killed the avengers one but moving on i liked also like this episode because it didn't necessarily feel like a reskin i said this last week last week's episode the one with t'challa turning into star lord it didn't feel like a reskin but it still felt like a guardians of the galaxy story with star lord in the middle and obviously that's going to be the case like obviously like you're just remasking a character like that's the same thing but none of neither of these two episodes felt as reskin as the first episode last week's episode it didn't feel at like as much of a reskin but after watching this week's episode i will say last week's episode was still a reskin to an extent but overall i i thought the I thought the whole idea, like the whole murder mystery aspect really just comes into play really good here because they have a lot of freedom in terms of what they want to do story-wise. They just have to get from point A to point B. It doesn't really matter what you do in the middle. And I think they took advantage of that with the animation. I think another thing they took advantage of with the animation was 100% the big hero small time. But what I mean by that is basically they had Tony Stark on screen for like two, three minutes. That's it. If you did that in live action, you wouldn't be able to do that because you have to pay Tony Stark to, you have to pay actors like a minimum amount of money if they say a single line. In animation, it's not really that way. Also, it's not Tony Stark voicing him. If it was live action, you would have had to have the actual Tony Stark, Robert Downey Jr. do it. You know, now I'm actually gonna get into spoilers. I'm gonna be honest, I'm gonna get into spoilers now. So if you guys haven't already seen the episode, I'm gonna be getting into spoilers now. I loved what they did with the Hulk. That one scene that I was talking about earlier with the Hulk like expanding and exploding, that was so well done. That 100% could not have been done in animation. Also, the visual with Hank Pym going into Hulk's body and, and like enlarging his heart, like you cannot show that live action and it really worked well in animation. But now that I'm talking about spoilers, obviously the murderer was Hank Pym. I really love the motivation. Yes, it was kind of cheesy at times. It felt kind of like, they're, they're, it felt like they were just doing it to do it, but overall, I did feel like it was a unique story. I wasn't expecting it when she said hope, when Black Widow said hope, Pam, or just hope, I was like, okay, what what the heck is happening? I was like, why would hope be like, why would, why would it be hope? But it ended up being Hank Pym trying to basically avenge hope. 
And that's what I really liked about this episode. I, I felt like it was a unique story, unique plot points. Just, it felt unique all around, even with the execution of the reveal. But now I'm gonna get like out of spoilers. I'm not gonna talk about spoilers. Actually, no, I wanted to do, I do wanna mention the end of the episode really quickly. Captain Marvel's tease and Captain, well, not Captain Marvel's tease. She's in that episode at the very end. But basically like the Captain America tease, I think that'll lead into another episode, but I'm really not sure, I'm gonna be honest. I don't really know how like pacing of the show works. None of the first three episodes have been uh, connected. And next week, it's rumored that it's gonna be the Doctor Strange episode, which is the most basically like anticipated slash hyped up episode from the people working on the show. And it's probably one of my more anticipated characters to see. Not necessarily episodes. The one I'm most excited, the, the episode I'm most excited to see is Ultron getting the Infinity Stones. But the character I'm most excited to see is not Ultron. It is actually Doctor Strange being the Sorcerer Supreme or whatever like the dark version of him is when that was in the trailers. That's the character I'm most excited to see. And I'm excited for next week's episode if that is the case. But overall, we don't even know like the, the main formatting. We don't know if this episode is going to do anything. We don't know if the Captain Carter episode. Well, obviously, we know that Captain Carter is going to be Doctor Strange because they met in the trailers. But we don't know how like and when all of these stories are going to meet if all of them are going to meet we really don't know how a lot of these things are going to work but now i do want to get out of spoilers so again if you haven't already seen the show i'm not going to be going over spoilers anymore but i my only complaint about this episode has to have been the pacing at the end it felt completely rushed and it just felt so poorly paced at the end the episode really had no time to breathe especially after the reveal that it was hank pym like that battle that fight was really cool and then how they manipulated Nick Fury and it was actually Loki and then they like tricked him in the graveyard and then all that kind of stuff like that was all super duper cool but after that moment the resolution was obviously Loki saying that he took over the world basically and then Nick Fury seeing all of the dead heroes with Nick Coulson in the shield lab place and then even after that Captain Marvel and the, Ca the Captain Marvel showing up and then the Captain America tease all of that just felt so rushed these episodes this episode at least needed to be five minutes longer last episode i feel like they could have made it breathe a little better but that only needed like one or two minutes just a few seconds extended on a lot of different scenes the first episode i just wasn't the biggest fan of but this episode really needed at least five minutes at least five minutes throughout the episode for it to be paced a lot better but overall that's really my only complaint overall i'm gonna give this episode a solid nine out of ten i might bump down last week's episode to an eight out of ten and this one put to an 8.5 but as of right now as i'm recording this video it's gonna be a nine out of ten if you guys want to up if you guys want my updated like rankings and of the episodes as well as my scores as of right now i put it at three is the best two is the second best and one is the worst none of them are actually necessarily bad but that's just my order if you guys want to see all my updated rankings as well as my ratings for the episodes make sure to follow me on instagram and on twitter you guys can see those at the end of the video let me know what you thought of what if episode three in the comments down below thank you so much for watching i'll see you next time peace